Hey guys, I hope you guys are well and you've learned something new on the channel. And uh, speaking of new, there is a new site for Laravel, uh, you know, as of the release of version uh, nine. So they did kind of a site refresh, which looks amazing. You guys should go check that out. If you check the prologue in the release notes, we can see that uh, Laravel 9 has been officially released and LTS is on security fixes for version 6 and version 7 is reaching end of life. So uh, there's a lot of new features in Laravel 9 that I'm really excited about that we're going to have to go through and check out. Um, but for this one, we're going to take a look at how to get um, Laravel up and running on the Mac. So we're going to fire up Terminal and we're gonna check a few requirements before we begin. So if you follow the Windows videos, um, you could do Homestead. There's also a Homestead approach also for the Mac. If you guys are interested, let me know and I can do that one. Um, but for now, we're gonna take the Valet approach. So you do have some requirements. So you need PHP for one. So if you do a PHP-V and you don't have this on your system, uh, you're gonna to have to install PHP. There is a video on the channel, how to get this up and running. And you'll also need uh, Composer. And there's also a video for that. So do check that out. I'm just gonna clear this. And one more thing you'll also need with Composer is you have to make sure that Composer is in your path. So we are using ZS, uh, ZSH. And the way we can do that is we can echo out our path and just kind of see if you already have uh, Composer in your path. So I'm gonna do that right now. And if you do, you should see this. You should see Composer bin, Vendor bin. If you don't, um, you may have to open up your uh, ZSHRC file. So we'll just do that right now. And I'm just using Visual Studio's code. And you will need something like this inside of your uh, ZSHRC file. If you don't have that, I'll provide that in the description so you guys can see what that is. And I'll clear that out. So once again, PHP Composer, and you're gonna need um, Brew. So um, Valet does require that you have Homebrew installed. So do a Brew update to make sure that you're up and running and ready to go, and if that's good, um, just if you have any requirements to do, just kind of update those things so that you can have Brew ready to grow. All right, with that said, let's proceed to installing Valet. So we need to install Valet via Composer, and we're gonna do this globally. So we're going to say Composer Global, and we're going to require, and the thing we're going to require is Laravel Valet. So we're going to run that, and it's going to install version 2.8, it looks like. So once that's done, we're just going to clear, and um, we're going to do a Valet install. That's the next command. So we're going to do Valet install, and this will require you know credentials, depending on how your thing is set up and it will run Nginx or get that installed if you don't already have that installed on your platform. So if you don't have Nginx installed, it will jump out and it'll grab it via Homebrew and it will install it for you. I've also done this again, um, just so you guys can see this from the scratch, from the, you know, from the beginning. So uh, you'll notice that some things are slightly different. So for one, my TLD is set to code and I believe yours will be dot .test. So if you wanted to check if Valet was successfully installed, you could ping and you know say like foobar and do a dot, in your case, it'd be a dot .test. Now if I run this, uh, I won't get anything because I, I don't have the TLD set to test. So I would have to ping, let's say foobar, and I'll do code. And as you can see, I get a 127.0.1, which is telling me that everything's okay. Valet is actually up and running and doing its thing. Okay, so we'll just control C to clear that. So I'm gonna do a PWD to check my current working directory. And I've also created a folder uh, called code, which is where I'll keep my Laravel projects. So you can do that by typing in the make directory and typing in code or whatever you like, projects, or whatever you want to call the directory that's going to hold um, your content or your projects. So for now, I'm just going to cd into code, and I'm just going to pwd, and you can see that I'm here. I'm going to do an ls, and there's nothing here right now. So there is one more thing that we need to do. In order to create Laravel projects, we're going to have to install the Laravel installer. And now we need to use Composer and we're gonna global require and we're gonna use the Laravel slash installer, okay? 
And this will allow us to install Laravel in our projects or folders from anywhere. So the execution of this command may look a little different because I've already done this and I just wanted to go over it one more time with you guys just to show how this is done. Um, now that I'm here, I'm just gonna do another clear and I'm gonna say Laravel new. And I guess the convention here, it seems like it's always gonna be some type of uh, blog or something like that, but we could try, you know, Laravel new project, you know, let's try that and it'll install and set up a new project using the latest LTS version of Laravel. And there is one more thing you'll have to actually do. So if we type in valet, you'll see that there's a list of commands and one of the commands that you'll need to pay attention to is called park. So if you were inside of your directory, like I'm gonna do a PWD down here, uh, you need to do something like valet park inside of that directory. And what that will do is it'll tell Valet where all your projects reside and it'll know where to serve these projects from. So um, you can do that. And if you wanna see all of the um, you know items that are parked, you can say Valet parked. And you can see that right now I have parked you know, this project.code inside of this path, okay? so that will help you serve that up. And I'm gonna show you how to change your TLD, your top level domain. So once again, if you say valet TLD, it'll show you that my TLD is called code. But when you run this, yours will probably be like test, that's the default. So if you were to type in valet and TLD, and then say for instance, if you wanted code, you could type in code, it would restart valet, reprovision a little bit, and then you'll have code as your TLD. So you don't have to do this. You can leave it at test, it's totally fine. It'll totally work. And we'll fire up um, a browser to see if you know this is working as expected. So I believe I called my project. Um, yeah, it was a project, I guess, dot code. So once that's run, valet has everything running for us, and you'll see that we have Laravel the latest version 9.02 and it requires uh, PHP 8 or higher and in my case I'm using 8.1. So that's pretty much it for getting Laravel Valet set up. Um, I went through that fairly quickly but if you're following the Homestead tutorials or anything like that you could see that this approach is significantly faster, a little bit um, easier to use um, but there are some advantages of using Homestead versus Valet. So um, you make a choice based on your needs and then you can see how this is done. So that's it for this one, guys. I hope you guys enjoy the install for Laravel Valet and for Laravel version 9. If you like the content on this channel, don't forget to subscribe, give a like, thumbs up, and leave any comments that you guys have. I will do my best to answer uh, any comments that are posted as quickly as I can. And I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.